Dear friends, in this world, we are like Jesus, of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. Guiding presence authenticated. What's going on? All systems operational. Recursive diagnostics complete. It's a self-sacrificial self action which you take on the burden of someone else for yourself. Yo, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. This is John McCray What Do You Mean for CrossExamine.org. And the world listens to them. They are from the world, and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world. You, dear children, are from God, and have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. When people claim to not believe in Christianity, and you ask them what they believe, what... And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, God is love. One of the most popular slogans that you'll hear is that and to love one another as he commanded us. Whoever lives in love lives in God. They believe in a God of love. But Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. And receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. But what they mean by that is probably not what you think it means. Let's talk about what they really mean when they say it, and what exactly is wrong with that conception of God. And God in them. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. In our culture today, we think of love to be mostly a feeling. We think we love someone when we have really, really strong, positive feelings for them, and we think that they love us if we feel that they have really strong, positive feelings towards us as well. So when people say that they believe in a God of love, what they usually mean is that they believe that God has these overwhelmingly positive feelings towards them, and that God wants them to feel happy and positive feelings themselves. But although love can and often does contain positive feelings towards someone, if that's all that we mean by love, then that isn't the kind of love that any of us truly want deep down. Think about it. If love is just a feeling, then that means that the type of love that someone has for us entirely depends on those feelings which can change as people and life experiences change. There isn't any real security in this, and that's why you often hear of people leaving their spouse because they fell out of love. Contrary to this, true love is a far greater idea of love that most of us really do want. A better way to think of true love can be found in the love that a good parent has towards their children. If you're a parent, think about how you love that child. We know it by the spirit he gave us. 
And then I want you to recall all those times that you, you were tired the and your kids of just didn't seem as cute to you as they once did in that moment. In fact, there's a lot of times when the God. kids may have been mean and, whoever and needy knows God and ungrateful, listens to and us. it's in those times that you but may not have is not had from those God. same overwhelming not positive to feelings towards your this kids is how that we recognize you used to have. But nonetheless, you still love your child, and the reason that you know you do is not because you feel those positive feelings towards them, because in some moments you might not have those feelings, but because you're willing to help and serve them no matter how you feel. That kind of Every love is far that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh so is from feelings. This true love but is every that you're willing that does to not your needs and Jesus. your well-being above your own. You're willing to take on their burdens yourself because love is going to cost this you. The spirit your love for your kids is going to cost you. What you have heard is coming and time, even now is already and, so and that's why the love that you have for your kid is one of the deepest and clearest demonstrations of love that humans can experience. And it's not based purely on positive feelings and emotions, but instead it's an action. It's a self-sacrificial action in which you take on the burden of someone else for yourself. Okay, and this is how we know that he lives in us. God. If true love is not a feeling, but instead it's an action, then when people say that they believe in a God of love, then the question now becomes, how do you know that this God is a God of love? What sacrificial action did it take for God to demonstrate his love for you? Or better yet, what did loving you cost God? Well, if they believe in the God of Scripture, then it actually makes sense when they say that God loves them. Not only does the Bible say that God is love, but also God proved his love with action. Only in Christianity does God show us that he loved us by taking on human flesh and he came into our world, lived the life that we should have lived, died the death that we should have died, and then offered the life that he lived to us in our place for the things that we freely chose to do wrong. He took on our burdens for himself as a way to serve us in love. And even more, he did this not for his own benefit, but for ours. So when it comes to all of these other conceptions of God, Nothing what better example of love Maybe she worked today. She this. got on a platform and said Whoa. that the reversal of Roe v. Wade in the Supreme Court is exactly what slaveholders would have wanted. There isn't any real security in this, and that's why you often hear people leaving their spouse because they fell out of love. Apart from the Christian God, I don't know of another conception of God that can make God truly loving in this real and true sense of the word. In fact, I don't even know of any other religious text that describes love as being one of God's primary and essential attributes in the first place. So, with all that being said, when people say that they believe in a God of love, but it isn't the Christian God, then my first thought is to wonder how they know that their God loves them. Only in Christianity can we truly know that God loves us, despite our lack of love that we once had towards Him. And it's only in Christianity that we truly have a God of love. Now, if you're interested in hearing me talk more about Christianity and culture, you can check out my YouTube channel called What Do You Mean? And for more exclusive content from myself and other apologists, make sure you subscribe. It's a self-sacrificial action in which you take on the burden of someone else for yourself. All right? A few years ago, I was thinking about how the pro-life movement needs to position itself in order to have the most impact. After all, we've been laboring for over 40 years to stem the tide of abortion in the United States, yet nearly one million unborn children will die from abortion this year. So in that moment, God downloaded a praise to me that has reshaped the way I think about what it means to be pro-life, and as a result, what parents would have wanted. That phrase is pro-abundant life. It's inspired by John 10.10, 10, where Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So let me take a moment to explain what pro-abundant life means and how it is transforming Karenet's work and we hope. You could just spell it K-W-I-K. Somebody in the comments said to me, oh, well then you can say the same thing about C. You don't need C, you just need a K. And I said, no, 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 no. I want to answer that. You do still need C. You cannot spell a word like chat without a C. You cannot spell a word like cheetah without a C. A K is not gonna cover that. K doesn't make the sound like a C does in a different way, right? It doesn't, doesn't, mm -mm, you're not gonna get ch, ch with a K. So C is a necessary letter, K is a necessary letter, W is an ex a necessary level, and usually most times in scenarios where you have a Q, you either just need the K or you need the KW. It was somebody that was very dumb who helped create the alphabet who came up with the letter Q. That's all I'm saying. And I do believe, as I told my husband on this walk, that this may very well be my hill to die on. This may very well be it. Bury me here, spread my ashes right here on this hill. So this comment came from Nasifo. Uh, Nasifo writes, 
LOL, I know this wasn't the topic of the day, but the letter Q may be redundant in the English language, but it's essential in my language. It's pronounced in your language. I'm going to try to say this right. Isa Kosa, right? One of the official languages of South Africa. You cannot make certain clicks without the letter Q. So yeah, it's important. I don't disagree with that. I'm speaking particularly about the English language. We do not need the Q. Like I, I know that you need it in Spanish. You might need it in other languages. You might need. When you allow yourself to make choices, then your choices are based on your motivation, and your motivation is based on your definitions. This is the other way to explain the three-part process. Your behavior, your choices, are based on your motivations, your emotions, which stem from your definitions, which are your beliefs. So anytime you are making a choice, it is always because you have been motivated to make that choice. Motivation only has two parts to it. This is all there is to motivation. You will always in every single case, you will always choose what you perceive to be the choice that is closest to pleasure and furthest from pain. That's it. That is your entire motivational force. But notice I said you will choose what you perceive to be closest to pleasure and furthest from pain. And that's where definitions come in. Because only as you define what you believe to be pleasurable or painful, will you then be motivated to make choices in accordance to that belief. So many Incredibly, times you may choose things that on one level you could say seem to be detrimental or destructive to you. But if you keep choosing it, that simply means that you must have a definition in your belief system.